class is being recorded. Okay. So I've seen, as I've said, uh, I've just seen uh, Masi Chero teach. I'm also seeing Brenda McKenna, Brenda McKenna, another Brenda McKenna. Okay, we can continue nominating and down with the most nominations wins the, the class reposition for our class. So, uh, okay, let's go on, let's go on. Uh -huh. Let me see the charts. Let's do this very fast. I'm seeing Ant uh, Anton Atogo with Joy Kawera, Brenda Masi, uh, Cheru Teach. I think that is the second Masi Cheru Teach. I'm seeing Brenda McKenna. In Brenda McKenna, I'm seeing now the third time. Uh, Masi Cheru Teach, I've seen two times. Uh, the fourth time, uh, Brenda McKenna. Oh, okay, if you are typing your name, you might be typing your name for, for the purposes of the register. Kindly ensure you're type you're nominating someone. Don't let don't nominate yourself. <laughs> so I'll not be taking self-nominations. So I'm seeing uh Masi Chero Teach, Masi Chero Teach, Masi Chero Teach, Masi Chero Teach. Okay. Uh I'm seeing Muli Kyoko also Masi. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, let's continue, let's continue finishing up on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot, lots, lots, lots. I'm seeing Brenda McKenna, Brenda McKenna. So. Uh, maybe Jude, you can be, you can be, you can be uh, counting for me the the Masi Cherotich and the and the Brenda McKenna, so that we have uh, a valid a valid tally of votes uh, between them. Then we get to. Excuse me, mm, sir. <laughs> So you can be checking for me that. Check, check for me the, the, the numbers so that we finish up on that issue of class rep. So what our class rep will be doing most of the time is we'll be coordinating in getting to know uh, Sorry, somebody, some people are calling me right now. So if you see me muted a bit, I might be uh, rejecting a call uh, from some students because they're right now in class. So, yes, as I've said, the class rep is going to be responsible for uh, handling any issues that you may be having aliasing between me and you, uh, getting to know if there are notes that people are not getting, if there are questions, if... you want an extra session, if you did not understand uh, that, I will get to that, another call. Okay, uh, so as I've said also, as we go on, uh, okay, I'll start meeting people. Uh, okay, Jude, let me meet you. Okay, you, I hope you are counting uh, as you remain muted. Then you'll give me the final tally. So as I've said, going to, uh, the class is going to be handling the issues, liaising with me, uh, getting to understand the issues that we're having, and also if there are any students who have been issues with accessing the class, and uh, even being enrolled on the on the learning on the e-learning portal and going on forward. So uh, maybe uh, once we get the class rep, the class rep will just give an opening statement of if there have any, been any issues. Because since I also coordinate e-learning at Taraka, you might be I've already encountered some challenges, and you want to share with me, then uh, we can start the course one or three class that I'm teaching you. So uh, Jude, 
Yes. Somebody want to say something? Yes, it's Brenda. Yes. Yes, yes, um, Brenda. I think I'm already the class representative of English and literature. So I mm -hmm. think someone they should start choosing some some, some other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what's the feeling of members? You know, uh, personally, I, I, I don't, I can't, I can't uh, have a say on who becomes your class rep. You know, it's your, you're the students and you, you, you would want maybe somebody, maybe they've seen, you're the one who can serve, I don't know. Maybe uh, Masi can also do that. But personally, I just need a, one person I can say, this is the person I talk to. And if somebody has an issue, they tell me, you go to talk to this person because I've already told them what to do. So, uh, I don't know. How the, first of all, let's look at the tallies. Uh, Jude, do you have a final, uh, final tally for the numbers of, uh, for, the, for, the, for those who have voted? Yes, Jude? Just a minute, I'll give you the record. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello, this is Jude. It's Jude. Sorry, somebody called me, so I lost uh, the suit. Okay, from what mm -hmm. Brenda said that uh, they might start electing someone else. Mm -hmm. I think now from other, from other people, mm -hmm. Masi, Masi is taking the post. Okay, okay. Masi is winning the post. Okay, that, thanks so much for being the, the free and fair uh, returning officer for that so maybe Marcy can unmute herself and maybe confirm whether she's willing to take up the post and also yeah, just say something so that I, I know you hello hello yes Marcy okay um Marcy Cherotich taking hello. Bachelor of Arts English and Literature and being elected as the class rep, I'm able to work with them. I'll support oh. them in any way. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marcy. Uh, I hope, do you have my number? Yeah, I yeah. Okay, okay. You last with me, we'll, uh, we'll catch up after the class and get to, uh, so that we, I can be telling you what we'll be doing. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm uh, trying to log into my account. Hello. Yes. Kindly, sir. Yes. I don't yes. think. I don't think. If you are very clear, but uh, I have one suggestion. Yes, yes. Any other suggestions? Anything that can help us improve? Okay, my suggestion is Yes. Let Brenda be liars with you so that we get a group coordinating this class in that everything runs smoothly. Okay. A WhatsApp group for this class. Yeah, you can just form one and add me there. 
I'll be glad to join in. Then you can share the link and get the people for this class coming. I'm good with that. That is funny. Okay, that one now goes to Masi Chero teach responsibility to do that. Okay, okay, Masi, uh, I hope you'll do that. Then you'll add, you'll add as all. Well. And maybe you can share the link, even if you can prepare right now and share the link on the chat, that will be fine. But we can do it after the class so that we avoid distraction, so that you don't move away from the, from the Zoom. So uh, I'm logging in somewhere, just getting to the Zoom link in the e-learning portal. Uh, let me see whether it's going to log me in. Okay. Uh, so that you can hear me. I'll leave the audio from my phone. I think uh, to leave this audio. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll, before I share my screen, I'll stop my video here. And I'll start my video there. Good. Uh, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, don't worry, I'm trying to set up a lot of things here. I hope I'm clear in terms of audio. Let me first share my screen. Um, do I join here or I join the other way? Okay. I'll do this. Mm. Okay, uh, so before I get into the course content, maybe you can tell me, uh, okay, let me go back to the course first. You can tell me whether, uh, whether you've been able to be enrolled. I can see a number of you. Are, is there any student who is in the, in the chat, in the, in the class who has not been enrolled? Uh, to the group. Anyone has not been enrolled? If you are there, you can maybe unmute yourself and Okay, uh, Aaron is asking me to pardon. Uh, okay, there's somebody is asking about the passcode and meeting ID. I've sent the link. Uh, let me I'll send it again. Uh, right, but we're not going to be doing this every class. By the time we get to the third or the, the other class, I'll only be accepting uh, students getting into the class uh, only through the e-learning portal, because that is the only way you can get to see. I don't want to see some Infinix and some and some weird names. Uh, if you are joined through the portal, I can only see your name, which makes it very easy for me. So, uh, okay. So I, I think somebody, anybody who has not been done registration, let me check the chat. Okay, somebody is asking about sending names. Uh, okay, oh, my, my network is not clear. Also, you can tell me because I can't, I can't be confirmed. I've, I'm trying to ensure that I'm using my phone so that I'm clear. I mean, let me see whether I can use my earphones uh, so that I'm clearer. Uh, am I clear? Am I clear now? 
Maybe you can see in the chat. Yes, am I clear now? Yeah, oh, okay, thank you, Aaron. Yes, uh, uh, Ronnie, McKenna, Emmanuel, Murage. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, you'll allow me to put my phone in my pocket. Okay, and see. Mm. Okay. So, uh, we can start the class, right? Uh, unless maybe they, have there been any issue, maybe any issue you've been facing in terms of e-learning, in terms of what you've been doing with regards to e-learning. I know not all the lecturers are, are so good at doing these e-learning things. And I totally understand maybe you've been getting some challenges from certain classes, but you know, it's something that is, that is happening and uh, uh, we also expect you to be coming back, but still, even when you come back, uh, I can assure you that we still have be having some online classes. So, so still, we really need to be as proficient in this as possible. So, uh, okay, any challenges? Jude, you have something to tell me? I think for now, there's nothing else you can commence the class. Hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Maybe somebody with some, if you have anything to say, you can do it on the chat. I'll be checking the chat uh, somewhere. I'll be checking the chat at some point in time. Okay, I'll mute okay. everyone. Kindly confirm you can hear me. I had muted myself also on this side. Uh, can say yes, then you can move on to the class. I can go to the course content. Mm Someone is asking, how do I know that I'm enrolled? You log into your e-learning portal and you'll see this class course 103 introduction to computer application group D. Education, so you see that. Yeah, so that is what you see. Okay, uh, so again, uh, I'll, I'll allow participants to unmute.
So when I allow when I when I allow you to to unmute, it doesn't mean that you are you are only unmute when you're speaking. Only unmute when you're speaking. So stay muted when you're not speaking. I'm only just doing that to ensure that uh, you can tell me when I'm not clear. I'm switching to another application so that I, some of you some of you are saying this the screen was not clear. So I'm trying to to do that. So I have a very interesting activity for you. Uh, so I, you'll be able to minimize your zoom and you'll be able to to still hear me. So I'd like you to do this uh, if you are able to. Uh, let me see a very interesting activity. I hope you're going to enjoy that then as you, as you do it. It's also part of the class. So don't worry, it's also part of the class. So let me log in uh, to something here on the smart board so that you take part in that activity so that you are also part of this. Let me check your chat. Uh, Karen, I'll, ask, I'll answer that at the end of the class. Right now we are on course 103. So uh, don't make it an orientation. Uh, so somebody is asking if you are enrolled into group, both group C and B, which is which? Uh, you are, Kalia Kendagor, you follow your group. Uh, if you're not in group D, you go to group C according to the course that you're taking. That is how you do it. So uh, I'd like to do an acti a shout out activity for you so that we, we take part in this. Uh, so, uh, up. Okay. So I'd like you to do this. You can still minimize your Zoom and it will still, you'll still be able to hear me. Uh, go to, let me, I don't know what I can do. You go to hellosmart.com. Let me do that on the chat. So hellosmart.com, hellosmart.com. Uh, Vincent, I've sent the link. I'm sending the link. There's a reason why I'm sending the link and not the meeting ID and the passcode. Uh, people should can you can use the link and it will work. You don't need that uh, meeting ID and passcode. Uh, so for those who are having issues with enrollment of units, uh, enrollment of units, we'll handle it after the class. Kindly don't make it this. Don't make this a class for helping you uh, sort some issues. Let's do course one or three kindly. So uh, hellosmart.com, uh, then you type that number. The number is 688, uh, 680, uh, you do that, go there uh, so that I can, uh, I can do something with you and just show you something. Uh, so you go to hellosmart, you can still minimize your zoom in because not, as long as you don't leave the class, you can do that. Go to hellosmart.com and you type that uh, that that number six eight eight six eight eight so that we do something together. It's a very uh, nice activity. Uh, that you can take part in. So 
as I've said. Mm -hmm. And I can put my camera closer. You can see that hellosmart.com. For those who have been able to do that, I can I can just see one or two. Then uh, I see what goes on. So that we do the class, we start. You just when you type hellosmart.com, I don't know what happens. Let me just let me just share my screen here. Uh, and just show you that process. A uh, new private window. Now let me just share my screen on this side. Uh, share screen. Then I do this. I share. Uh, can you confirm you can see my screen? I believe you can uh, see. Uh, although I don't know whether it's clear but it might be kind of clear. So I have said you type hello smart.com like that. And then I can see Sharon Kihagi has already joined, that is nice. Uh, then you just click uh, join as a guest. Then the class ID is 688, 688, 688, 688, 688. You do that. Then you just type your name. Uh, for example, here I can type Kevin just to show. So once you do that, you'll be taken into the class and I'll be able to see that. I can see a number of you have joined. So I'll just uh, go back to Zoom. Uh, let me do Zoom. Uh, so you can see hi, just waiting for a teacher to start the lesson. So you should see something like that. That is what I mean. So let me stop sharing here should see something like that. Let me see the chats, if these questions there. This is a power issue. Uh, somebody is asking, do you sign in? Okay, I said you don't sign in. Uh, Oh, somebody asking me to pardon. I was giving you a certain activity. It's called a shout out activity. Uh, I'm waiting for there's a certain. There's a certain power issue that uh, is a power issue, but we'll get back to that. So I'll, set, I'll take you through what course 103 is all about so that you get to understand. We'll, we'll go back to that activity uh, once uh, we resume on that. So uh, let me just do my video here. So I'll take you through what course 103 is. Course 103 is a, is a, frog, it is an, it's a unit that is being done uh, by all students. Some students will be doing it this semester. You are part of the students who are doing it this semester. And then some students will be doing it in that other semester, that is uh, semester two. So uh, you're privileged to be doing it at this point in time because uh, you're going to be learning a lot and you're going to be getting to understand a lot with regards to what is uh, what are computers. And I'll talk about computers. Uh, I'll start with a question that I usually love to ask my students when they're uh, when they're starting out uh, this course. Uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word computer? Somebody can say it verbally, you can unmute yourself, and some, another, you can type on the chat, 
let's share our ideas. What, what comes to your mind? If I just say the word computer, what comes to your mind? I hope you can hear me. Uh, what comes to your mind? Okay, uh, yes, yes, gone. It's it's an electronic device used to put information in a coded form. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh yes. So we are uh, basically on, on one of the same page whereby you're saying that uh, a computer basically can is powered by as in it is it uses electricity it is powered it is uh, an electronic device that is basically one aspect of it which is we are all right we are all right with that uh, but even before we go to that definition i don't want us to get to that definition i just want us to be like layman let's say like you are you are about to just go somewhere and maybe for the first time uh maybe you are told uh you are telling someone maybe you are telling a show show somewhere uh uh, you're trying to describe to them a computer. You know, if somebody doesn't know what electronic is, they will never, they, 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 they will also be saying, what is electronic? But I'd like you to, to think of it. The way I would tell you, I would ask you, uh, what is a human being? Then you'll be telling me it is, it is, a, it is, a, it is a, an, a, like, let's say, a creature that walks on two legs, right? That is, I would like you to, to go on that, on that, on that path the layman part before we get to those uh, complex complex definitions or let's say the one that does these input process output i'd like us to just go simple let's start let's start slow we go slow on it so uh, i saw all of us saying electronic which uh, I, I i really accept we know it's an electronic device but i want us to start at the basics I believe so there are some of us who have never even seen a computer, right? Yeah, so, so I'd like us to start from there. So somebody can just unmute yourself. Don't raise your hand and ask to unmute. I think you, can, you have the ability to, to unmute. So you can just unmute, just unmute yourself. Just unmute yourself. Uh, okay. I can be checking. Yes, yes, yes. Go on. Go on. What Please if I leave. say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, yes. Okay, what if I say the computer is a machine? Yes. As you told us, like, I don't know. I should share. Yes. Okay, Nasema. Mm hmm. To explain like, uh, exactly. Nataka hivo. Nataka kitu very, very basic. Okay, what if we want to say that a computer is a machine uh -huh. that can be instructed to carry out uh -huh. Uh -huh. a sequence of logical operations uh -huh. whereby uh -huh. It can accept in data, process the data, and give out uh, other information uh -huh. in an output manner. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm done. Okay, but the only complex. Yes, I, I agree that is a very good definition, but but the only complex. I'd like us to to think of it at a very very basic level, so that I, I tell you, I, I explain to you where computers came came started from. Yes, yes, who, who is it? Uh, I can see. Hello? Yes, yes, Maxwell, we can start with Maxwell, then we can go on, who is speaking? So you say that we explain it in a basic way. Yes, in a layman, Let's, we, let the, it, the word is usually called layman, Cindy? Yeah. Yeah, let's do layman. Maybe to according to me, I can say like, a computer is a combination of a keyboard, a mouse the, and then um, the monitor mm -hmm. that can be yeah. mm -hmm. we are getting now we are almost getting there but what if i don't know what a keyboard is i've never seen a keyboard i've never seen a mouse what what 
there are some people who are hearing about those terminologies today for the very first time. Okay, let me change then. We can say that a computer is a, a device that can, you can use it to research. Hmm? In a basic way, you can say that can use been researching. So. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. mine, yeah. mine I can tell my, for example, my grandmother, yeah. that it is a modern device that uh, has isn't the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I can hear some layman terms. It makes work easy. Yes, it makes work easy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I can say mm -hmm. uh, a computer. Let me explain yeah. like something that I've ever seen. I yes. can say a computer is something that can calculate from the word mm -hmm. computer, compute, something that can be Yes, uh, now that is, we are getting now, now there. Like mm -hmm. compute is the another word for, for calculate. So even yeah. a calculator is a computer. The calculator we use the FX82MS. We are still using that one. Yes. Yeah, that one is also a computer. So we are getting there. We are getting basic. So uh, any other, any other? Yes, yes. Yes, I can say. Yes. That a computer is, is simply a device for communication, mm -hmm. uh, storage of data, and uh, research. Mm -hmm. But I still need some layman. I need some, I don't want the computer terminology, storing data, uh, backup, research. I would like some simple terms, making work easy, calculator, those kind of, I, I like those kind of uh, terminologies. We'll still get there. I know we'll still get there. So I'd like to just uh, start very basic, very basic, then we move to, to something we can understand. So are we done with the contributions, the layman contribution? Uh, the, reason why I'm, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm not teaching it the same way somebody who is teaching uh, course 103 to actuarial science students and maybe become students who do it. I believe all of you are, are studying to be, to be uh, to having a career in teaching. If you are uh, you are going to be let's say English teachers, literature teachers. You're going to be uh, business, uh, but still, basically, all of you are going to be teachers of one subject or another, right? So, uh, basically, you need to get to start by uh, telling students, you are students, you are pupils, or or however you can call them, you are knowledge seekers, uh, terms, and also things in a very basic way. So that even before you get to take them to the book uh, and what the book says and what the note says, you can, you can, they can still relate to it. I can see somebody, Severity Samuel, yeah, that is a very nice, uh, that is a very nice, that is a very nice way of saying it, a big television. So for some, for some people who have already got uh, gotten a, an experience and they've ever seen a TV somewhere, they can see a big television like a machine that can make work easy and fast, which is also a very nice uh, way of seeing it. Uh, there's somebody saying, okay, also remain muted. If, uh, once you're done speaking and, uh, and you're done, kindly, kindly mute yourself back so that I don't have to look for you and start muting you when there is a lot of noise. So uh, there's somebody says, Malimu just share screen. At, okay, uh, I don't want to share my screen yet. I want us to get to understand what we are doing first. Uh, so that even when I'm starting to share my screen, you'll be able to understand what, what you're doing. So, uh, okay, 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 okay. So, I'm seeing a lot of definitions that have come through and that is very nice. So right now I'd like to now transition to, so to something else so that we get to now where we want to define what computers and we're still going to look at the history where computers started and, and you'll be able to appreciate where we are with, 
with the devices we have. I think there was a time when uh, all phones, they had to have a certain car aerial at the top. And people had to put their phones on their belts because I think it was share for Mfuko, they were so bulky. But right now you can have a phone, a smartphone, leave alone just a phone, a kabambi, you can have a smartphone. And uh, with, the, with the corona pandemic and something, uh, smartphones have no longer, are no longer a luxury. They are now a, 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 an essential device to your learning and also to, to your well-being. Some people are even making money, uh, maybe teaching, uh, maybe doing referrals and all that. So, so that is very, very important. That is very important. So in terms of uh, getting, getting into this, getting into the technological phase, you need a device. You need a gadget that can help you do this. So uh, I'll go back to sharing my screen. I'll go back to sharing my screen. Uh, so first of all, uh, before I do that, is there any question on what, uh, what we've just done in terms of getting to know? Uh, any question? Okay, I've seen Phyllis Njoki. It is a machine which uses electricity and makes work easier. Like a big TV contains a wide range of things other than a TV. Yeah, so for people who understand what a TV is, they can understand what uh, what it is. So if uh, if uh, I'll, I'll take you back to where uh, I was saying, come on, you explain to a show show. How would I do it? Personally, as Kevin, to it is how I do it. I'd tell I'd tell a show show this way. Uh, for example, a computer is a device. Okay, I will not say it in English. I would say it like a computer is a tool, for example, in Kisweli, I would say it like, ni, uh, what, what is a tool in Kisweli? <laughs> kifa, kifa. Kifa, 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 exactly. Yeah, kifa, kifa. ama ni kama, nesema ni jembe, 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 Chombo. Okay. Chombo. <laughs> okay, there are some there are some people who are in beard arts Kiswahili, yes. So you can correct me. Um not we are all learning, we are all in this together. Personally, I did I did Kiswahili in Donyeze Kwenshua because it was a, if I would to choose Nigesema like I would do uh, I would even bring in something else na to put up on so that we have even peer one this is a can I hear there's even uh, Apart from Sheng Sijukuna, is, is Gengeton a part of a language? I don't know. But I don't want to get there. I don't want us to go too into leisure. Let's go back. Let's continue. So, Nichombo, Sindio. So, we all agreed Nichombo, Sindio. Yes. Chombo. So, uh, computer, I think in more, more, nini, more Kiswahili Sanifu terms, Nitarakilishi or something. Uh, so, you can see. Uh, computer ama tarakilishi ni chombo kinachofanya kazi kazi unayofanya iwe rahisi zaidi kwa kukuwezesha ku, kupiga hesabu na kukupa matokeo ya hesabu hiyo kwa kwa what ina maana ina maana ni kijaji ni Kiswahili ina maana watu wa Kiswahili Kwa njia, kwa njia ipasavyo. Kwa njia, kwa njia ipasavyo ama kwa njia nye ni accurate, what is accurate in Kiswahili? What is accurate in Kiswahili? Kwa njia ipasavyo. Sambamba. 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 Kitu kama hiyo. But you totally get me. So, like, niki ongele kwa 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 kwa. Anazelewa, like, what I'm saying is, kama kuna binadamu wangefanya ukitu, kunge kwa na makosa maali, flani. Lakini kwa sababu natumia computer ama tarakilishi ninaweza kuwa ku what is to reduce ku, kupunguza kupunguza, kupunguza uh, makosa ama kitu yenye mtu anaweza fanya akosee makosa yote katika uh, kupiga sabu hiyo so i hope you totally understand now that is how, that is how basically you should do it in layman terms you should make someone understand from their context so like kama ni mtu mwenye anafaa ku ako kwa let's say what can it let's say muted let's say muted i don't want to i don't want to start 
uh, muting people. I don't want to go to the chat. So yes, so that is what I'm saying. Uh, you should look at somebody what they are doing. For example, if somebody are kwa posho mid, how would you explain to them? You can see you can see kusiaga uh, mind is bila kuenda kwa the other way, if you if you are not in a portion meal, you actually go in a video to me what there's those things in your auto and end up a mama and end up to take trans or he or kick gonga. I'm a sijuk nailing in my to me kanga kusiaga sindio. So that is uh the portion meal is like a computer with regards to maze mailing. Sindio. It which is making work easier, it is making uh things much better and faster so that you get kama uko na uko na wanasema gorogoro ama uko na kilo moja ya mahindi just basically uh when i get it in maize flour form in a very short time so that is that is now the that is now the what can i say the layman way of doing things so question uh, please yes Um, yeah. when you when you say when you talk of uh, making work easier mm -hmm. now can we say that a computer is a machine in a way um, okay every machine work uh, makes work easy yes but not every machine is a computer that is what i can tell you uh, i can say a, a, a partial mill is a machine but it's not a computer it might not be computerized right so we can't leave it at it is a machine and also there are machines that are there but they are mechanical they are not electronic and i'm talking mechanical it means like uh for example a bicycle is a, a mechanical uh movement device is it a vehicle i don't know not a vehicle but it is a it is something that can take you from one place to another but uh uh, uh cycle you say motorcycle right because it has the motor element it has uh, a motor then also these days we say we have hybrid cars that you can you can use electricity to power them and you can also use uh, what petrol to power them sindio so i hope you get the difference for uh, i hope i've answered you i don't know who was asking but i hope i've answered you that right sinisawa you can go on mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on. Let me get to my Zoom and share the screen uh, for the e-learning so that we can see the notes that were there for topic one, so that we cover that. Uh, let's, let me get there. You can be asking questions as we go on. Uh, let me check the chat if there's any. Okay, there's no question. Okay, I'm getting to my e-learning. So I'm logging in using my account on Google. I hope you've now understood the process of logging in using your account on Google. It makes so somebody is not muted uh, somebody is not muted so i'll mute them can you say muted uh pews you are not muted let me mute you uh I, I don't want to be muting you and ask you, I telling you to now uh, be unmuted. Asking me to unmute you. Uh, they are making me uh, mute them. They are going to make me now start making you people not able to, uh, to unmute yourself and I don't want that. I like you to un you to unmute yourself when you want and you can stop me and ask a question when you want uh, okay so um there yes and also encourage you there somebody has said something very important 
I encourage you to get uh, the mobile app. It makes you very easy to access the classes. Uh, okay, the Hello Smart will do it at the end of the class. Sinisawa, uh, somebody says uh, that this power went off, but I can see, okay, I can see the, the smart board is back, but I'll do that at the end of the class. Sinisawa, let's just focus on the class first. Uh, it was a very nice, interesting activity. We could have started, we could have said a lot to each other through the smart board and you could have seen it all there. But, but we still do it, Sinisawa, just at the end of the class. The class is from three to five. So I'm trying to ensure that we cover at least topic, uh, a, a big chunk of the first topic uh, today, since we didn't meet last week. So, uh, so I'm on topic one. Let me just get to the Zoom link first. Start the meeting. Join meeting as an attendee. Launch meeting. And those who are being coming in late for class, in Takwana Okay. Sorry about that. I joined my computer. So I'll do my I'll stop my video here and start my video there. Good. Okay. So I'll say those who are joining the class late, and I'm gonna lock class 30 minutes after joining in so that you don't distract the class. So let me share my screen. Uh, share screen. Uh, then I share two words. Let me do. Let me use the smart board. Good. We do extend. Good. Now I can focus on my view here. Then I do share my screen. Take I take the e-learning on the other side. Okay, don't worry, these things are kind of hard to control. So I'll share my screen. I'll share screen here. And I'll be checking the chat from this side. You'll be asking me questions at any one point in time. Uh, okay, for those who are saying on your Kuna Kupata, as in links, I've enrolled all of you today. I think I even enrolled so many of you in the e-learning platform. So you can just access the links on the platform. And I'll be sharing links most of the time. So I don't want people to be sitting back and waiting for Zoom to, I mean, kwa WhatsApp to anangoja my link. You are missing a lot uh, because you're not getting the notes. You're just waiting for Zoom link in the WhatsApp group. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you can see the screen. Confirm you can see the screen. Uh, my screen. You can see it, right? Uh, you can say yes on the chat so that we can confirm that. I'll be checking the chat from here. Good. Thanks, Kazia, Bakesa, Hili. Okay. So, so every time you join the class uh, on the mobile, whether it's the mobile app, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, whether it's the e-learning portal, uh, when you log in, when you log in, uh, you get this part. You get to this part. Uh, okay. You usually get to this part. India. So. Uh, so 
when you get to this part, under announcements, uh, okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. But you can see that is the link is usually here at the at the second just after announcement. You can be able to see the the screen. And you can be able to know that you are there and you can be able to use that. So uh, always always use the link that is here. You just click here. For you as you're going to see join meeting. But why as the lecturer and things start the meeting, but I've already done that. So for the students, maybe you are not able to access. I don't know that it's showing you the join link, but you can. But I would prefer we actually just come here and start the class uh, from here, just in the class. Uh, we have a chat room uh, within the group. You can just use the chat room. You can be coming here with that, it's like our staff. Uh, so I can see, I can show you on this other side. I'll come to this other side. But you can see it. So I can just say, uh, hi. And you can see you can be coming here and just starting something. You can start when I'm offline and you can just, just, just like a WhatsApp. So you can use the chat somewhere there. We can be able to see the chat. Then you can now go to the topic, the topic for the day. So you'll allow me to yeah, getting a lot of pressure from that. Okay. Uh, so this is the objective of the of the of this chapter. At the end of it all, you should be able to explain the evolution of computing technology and the technological advancement architecture to current technology. Uh, explain the characteristics of computers and how they are different from humans. Uh, so allow me to use Edge. <laughs> uh, let me see whether I can use Edge. Uh, so that I can be able to just uh, annotate on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I said explain the evolution of computing technology and technological advancement. That, well, what that means is you get to see the history. Where did the computers start from? Uh, and where are we right now with regard to computing? So, allow me to, to go again to the next one. Explain the characteristics of computers and how they are different from humans. And that is why I was giving you the example of the humans and we are creatures who can stand on two feet. So we get to understand what are the characteristics of humans, for example, and what are the characteristics of computers. A computer can never tell you I'm bored. Uh, right now, if I, I was telling you, let's do this class to midnight, to die tonight, you'll not be able to, uh, to, 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 to concentrate for that long. But a computer can tell it, continue, type, continue maybe uh, burning a certain CD or doing a certain process that requires 10, or 10 hours to do it overnight and just leave it there and it continues doing it. A computer can never get tired. You are going to see those, those kind of, uh, those kind of, uh, uh, of characteristics. Then explain the different types of computers categorized based on size, price, and capabilities. You're going to see what are the different uh, sizes of computers that are there. Then uh, we are able to explain the fundamental difference between a computer, computer hardware, and software. These are some two deep main uh, parts of a computer, that is the hardware and the, and the software. I don't know whether I can do a white body and whether it will work. Uh, okay, I've lost my share. Maybe let me do the share again. Share my screen. Oh. Yes, yes. My audio. Somebody is asking me about my audio. What is it? Can you hear me? Somebody you wanted to say something? I've heard somebody say my name. Okay, let me check the chat. Maybe if there's something on the chat. OK, 
Okay, we can hear me. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Phyllis, and thank you. Who is it? Akai Lamek. Thank you. So when uh, if you're, you're free to interject me and just tell me, because sometimes I might not be able to see the chat, so you just tell me when I'm not clear so that I can, I can just ensure that I'm clear. I'm uh, trying to get to the content, to the con to the e-learning content on, on Microsoft Edge browser because I know that one is going to help me uh, help me annotate and 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 write on the on the board. Okay. Uh -huh. one or three. So for those who are having issues, Mercy, uh, kindly take note of, for me, those who have not been enrolled. So if you have not been enrolled, Mercy, you can share your number to the chat so that the, I can enroll you to the, to the class so that you don't be asking me for links uh, for the class. So the class basically is going to be uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, that is uh, 9, I mean, 3, 2.30. I, I remember I said 2.30, but next, week you're going to start at exactly three so that you don't have to wait for too long for me. I wanted to ask to be on 2.30 so that we can have everyone on board by three. Uh, so next, that would be that. And also you're going to be having some practical sessions, especially when you resume. But still, even if you're not having a practical session online, I'll be giving demonstrations. So uh, we're going to organize that. So we need to be meeting twice a week. But for now, uh, since we had not planned that this week, I'll organize a session next week. I'll follow up with timetabling and see when you are all of you, you are free. Then you'll be meeting uh, twice, preferably Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Wednesday we do the theory, on Thursday we do the, the practical. So we'll be having some practical sessions. Somebody's wondering how are you going to be doing practical online? Uh, don't worry. I'm going to be demonstrating so you'll observe. Then when you come to the campus, you'll be doing these things. We have, a, we have two big computer labs here and you're going to be doing those things there. Okay, 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 okay. I can see I'm logged in uh, here. Let me take this to this other side. Let me see whether it works. Okay. Uh, Have a whiteboard. Uh, okay, let me see whether I can now notate on this. Uh, okay, let me go. Let me go to the course of one or three group D. I think I've lost the share again. Okay, let me go back to the share. Share screen. Screen two. So let's go on. Let me go to the to the other content that is there. So let's go to topic one. Uh, where we were. Uh, I confirm you're seeing my screen. And also, Matthew can be taking notes. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not everyone to write their number, <laughs> your phone number, it's only Matthew. So, uh, I've already explained. So, history of computers. So uh, basically, with these, these are these are these are verbal one. Uh, you'll read it at at your pace. I'll just give you, you. You already have it on once you're enrolled. But I'd like to take you through how computers started, and 
and I can just do this uh, visual representations. of evolution of computers. So that you understand. So when you get to do the evolution, when we get there, I'll give you the example. And uh, when you're coming also to my class, uh, also come with a pen and paper, and I mean, and book. Come with your book for course one or three. So that you'll be writing something at some point in time, even if you are learning online, you'll be writing something. For example, I, 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 for those who have their book with them, uh, you can uh, you can understand this. And even before I I tell you the definition that is there, let me take you to this. I don't know that this one will work. Uh, it will work now. Uh, can delete this. Uh, do that. So, uh, when you're talking about a computer, can you confirm you can see that on the screen? Uh, somebody can tell me verbally because I don't know if I can have time to check it up. We can see it. Yes. So, when you talk about the computer, thanks. Uh, I think it's maybe it's Sakai. It has, uh, we have to look at it in terms of the characteristics. What can it do? So we start with, uh, we start with what is it in terms of uh, feature? What can it, what does it do? What does it do? And, uh, and then what is, what is, yes? Yes? Personally, you can see. You can see. Yeah, we can see. You can see, uh, I've shared my screen. Let me confirm. Let me stop the share, then I start the share again. And somebody to say, you can, you can say, I don't know, getting some, yeah, getting some feedback from me. Are you seeing the whiteboard now? Maybe McKenna, you can confirm. Yes, yes, we are seeing. Okay. okay. What uh, does it output? Let me just delete this first. Uh, what is the output? What is the output? Like that is, that is basically, uh, if you'd like to define a computer in a nutshell, you basically just need to look at these three kind of uh, definitions. So let's go on to it. Let's go to a new, a new board and just go to that. Let me just see whether I can go to a new board and see whether I can move. Uh, there. So go, going on, uh, we look at this this way. A computer, we know it's an electronic device. So I'll just do this. I know there's some three things that we need to look at. So maybe there's somebody who already said this in the definition when they are giving the definition. And the first thing is a computer receives what? Input, right? Who can tell me? Who can tell me what is in the middle middle box? Some of you have maybe even did computer studies in high school. So what is yes, yes? Somebody says something, something. What if I say arithmetic logic unit? Okay, I'm not on the. There's, I know there's that part you're talking about in terms of the architecture. But I'm not on that. I'm not on the on that architecture yet. I'm not on this yet. So I'm not on that still. But I want us to just start by getting to know what does it do. There's somebody. It is in, in most of your definitions. It is in. 
it is in most of your definitions. So there's input. I, I, I know there's something obvious that is here. Right? But what Can is I here? Yes. Can I yes. 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 Pardon, who is speaking? Uh, Oscar. Yes, Oscar. Yes, can tell us Oscar on this. Yes. I th I think it after you input it processes. Yes. So there is processing, right? Yes. So there's a processing bit there. So if there's a processing bit, all these processes are taking place within the computer, which are uh, which was basically right, which you're going to look at in terms of the architecture, but you're going to look at it later. So these are the main if these are the main activities, going back to what I was saying, uh, we haven't done what is it yet. We haven't done this yet. But we've just seen what it, what it does, right? So uh, we, we have already seen it produces an output. We haven't defined what it produces, but we've said that it has an output. So going back, going back to this, uh, we'll now get to now define. So, uh, most of you are very correct. In terms of what it is, Excuse it is what? Me. Yes, Excuse yes, there's a question. Somebody has a, somebody oh, has a question. The... Yes, yes. Yes, Zuma. the last word. Pardon? Yes, yes. Yes, I, I didn't see what you wrote on the, in the last box. In the last box, I wrote output here. The last box is covered. Yes. So there's okay, input, okay. there's processing, and then there's output. I hope I've answered this. Okay. So, so these are the three main, three main, uh, three main processes. So, Kiptarus uh, Kelvin is saying no audio. Let me check whether you joined the audio. But I hope I'm clear. Can you hear me? Yes, you are clear. Okay, thanks. So sometimes these technology stuff, I have to yeah, confirm. And so don't get tired of me. Don't get tired of me confirming, uh, so that I'm I, I'm sure that we are on the right page. So uh, let me go on. So we, we already said in terms of what it is, it is. Uh, no, that what color that is. Okay, okay. Is an electronic, it's something electronic device, right? So it is electronic, right? So that is the first thing, what it is. As some say it's a machine, some it's what. The other thing we could have said, it is also a device. That is the other thing. So we know that it is powered by, by electricity. It can work only better if it's powered. Then the next thing, uh, since we know that it is an electronic device, we have already now known what is it. We've already answered that. The other thing we actually need to go now to is what it does. So that takes in, okay, let me do another color. takes in input, that is the first thing. Uh, somebody can formulate for us a statement from this. Uh, what is the next statement, the next phrase? It is processes, processes that input, right? So allow me to do this so that I can be able to see everyone on the class. Uh, on, I'm also checking on how you are. You can also tell me when I'm not clear. If you have a question you want to ask, just don't 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 be afraid to ask. I'm here for you. Okay, I'm just maximizing this so that I can see a number of people. Good. Okay. Uh, so then, what is the next statement? I've said it takes in input. What is the next statement? Processes that input. Exactly. Processes that input, and the third one uh, can be somebody else. It gives, it gives out the, uh, the results of the output. Yeah, uh, produces an output. So we can go, can go here and say it's text in input. Uh, processes. 
the input. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm not seeing the whiteboard. The white, uh, okay. Have I lost connection? Okay, okay, oh yeah, so I, my Zoom has restarted. Let me just, let me just uh, go back to the whiteboard. Let it load a bit, allow it to load. Sometimes my network, okay, sometimes the network issue. Oh, it's reloading, it's reloading. So just bear with my connection. Let me just go back to the other connection. I'm using different connections. So let me see whether if I use this connection, it will work. Okay, okay, I'm good, I'm connected. So let it load back, share screen, uh, share screen. Uh, I can share the screen too, just to be sure that I'll be sharing everything on that screen. And then I can maximize, you can see the whiteboard now, confirm. Yeah, we can see. Okay, we're back on the on the whiteboard, that is nice. But so I'm seeing Yes? Yeah. I'm it's seeing the whiteboard. You're not seeing the whiteboard. No. You're seeing your you're yeah, seeing the zoom. The yeah. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay, okay. I, I now get it. Let me see. I've seen where this problem was. Okay, now you're reading the whiteboard now? No. No. Not yet. No. Yes. It's back. Yes. Now it's back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks for confirmation. Uh let's go on. Let's go on. So we are, we are making very simple statements. I don't want to make statements that are too complex, just very simple statements. So uh, process the input and uh, let me do another color. Produce the output. Produces an output. So produces output. the output. Uh, the output. So uh, this is basically what is it, a computer, you can define it in a very, in a nutshell. If I, if I just say it in one sitting and I'll just say I'm done with defining a computer is that. Let's, let's look at what was here. Uh, it was on which uh, part? It was on evolution. I think it was on edge. So you can see it was here. Uh, it was saying a computer uh, is an electronic device used for storing and processing data and carrying. Okay, there's one more step that we haven't added there. Uh, there's, an, there's another process. After you produce an output, we need to uh, we need to store that output either for future use or show that output. So it also uh, stores. The output, maybe for future use. So they don't want to just put many Somebody called on. Somebody is calling me. Yes, somebody asked me to say something. Somebody to say something. Okay, you can go on. So if you look at these four phrases, you can be able to, to just define a computer from these four phrases. Uh, you, a computer is an electronic device that uh, takes in input. When I talk about input, uh, think of it this way. Uh, we have, let's say, five and three. And at the end of it all, we want to either add these numbers, multiply them, uh, divide them. So five and three, if I take an example uh, like that, uh, let me just do a black one. If I take five and three, those are a set of inputs, right? And then when you're doing a process, processing, we can, we, what can we put in this set? Divide. We can put what? We can put divide, Let me just do this one, yes. We can do multiply, right? Multiply. We can do uh, addition. addition, and you can do uh, subtraction. Those are those are processes, right? Uh, yes. We can do a square, uh, uh, cube, and all that. 
then the output yeah. is basically the set uh, of answers from this. So if we fi do five divided by three, what happens? Somebody can tell us very fast. Hope you are not calculator. Uh, five divided by three. Five three. That is just one and uh, two over three. <laughs> is it two over three? Okay, it's one point five divided by three. Three goes into five. Uh, one. 1. 1.67. 1.67. 1. 1. 1. Okay. Okay, let's just, can we, let me just do it in this way. I don't want to put the, let me just do that, right? The answer, you know it, it's 1.67. Thanks so much for that. Then this one is, this one is? 15. This one is 15. 15. Uh, this one is? 8. 8. 8. 8. And 2. 2. Right? So that is the output. But at the end of it all, we might need to either so, give this output to the user through a monitor, through a screen, a calculator as a screen, or we would like to store that number. So somebody can stay muted. There's some maybe who came to answer, then they, they kindly stay muted. And then you go on. So, uh, so store the output. So we can store the output. I can give you some examples here. We can use the uh, CD. We can use a uh, uh, flash disk. Just, I'm just giving an example of where we can store the answer. We can use a uh, memory card. Uh, we can use the hard disk, uh, something mm -hmm. of that sort. So those are the things you can store something in. So basically, once you have the number, for example, I think your calculators, there are some calculators that have good features and they can, they can store even the answers. They can even save store formulas. Some had those kind of calculators. So basically that is, that is how you define. So let's go back to this and see. And I can zoom it out. Okay, yes. Yeah. So uh, you can see a computer is an electronic device used for storing and processing data and carrying out a sequence of operations. For example, the, the, the operations that we done. So it is a device which is invented to simplify the complicated task, just as we already said. So uh, for example, if you are to do some, some of them when they said 1.5, 1.67, maybe they went quickly to their calculator and they did it very fast. But if you are to do it, we had actually to start doing the long method. We do five, we put it inside, we do three and all that. Uh, so uh, you can see there's a story here, a very nice story written here about uh, the, when the time, the first uh, time when the, it, uh, the, the word computer was used uh, at, by an English writer, but yeah, I don't want to get into that. We are not in an history class for now, but I'll just, yeah, I'll give you this link, I'll give you this link on your, maybe uh, Marcy, I'll also share with you. You'll also add me to that group and share it with you. It's called spinfall.com yeah. slash evolution of computers. I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, somebody stay yeah. muted. <laughs> Let me see, who is it, who is it, who is it? Who is it? Okay, let me mute, uh, that, let me mute that one. Let me mute, who is there? Let me also mute. Okay, uh, okay. You raise your hands before you unmute, and so that I can I give you that chance. So the first computer, the first computer, and you'll be you'll be very surprised. It's called the Abacus. You can see that. Uh, I hope you can see. So there was uh, there's uh, a man who had started out to count numbers. We're actually just looking at numbers. Uh, it was actually developed around in China 3,000 years ago. Uh, the, the, the abacus was obtained from the word abac, and it was just basically looked like this. It is a frame that con contained horizontal rods and beads which have holes and are passed through the rods. Counting was done by moving the beads from one end of the frame to another. So this was how it was done. So, so for example, if here you'd like to say you would want to process, you'd move the green ones, one side and you can move to this side. That is how, that is the first ever computer. This was the first ever computer that was there. Then we move on. Uh, there's something called Napier's bones, which was a board. 
And uh, I don't want to get into the details of it. When you are interested and at one point in time, you can just check on this. Uh, so, so it was a set of rods. So what it would look like, it would look like this. So, uh, so you can see it is a device that contains a set of rods made of bones. It was developed by John Napier, a Scott mathematician, and the device was hence named Napier's bones because it was made from bones. So it was used for doing just two things, either multiplication or division. So that is how it looks. So you can see if you can understand something, you can see seven times one is seven, seven times two is uh, 14, but you can see that seven times three, 21. And it was a very nice, you can just, just go there and just check. Uh, then we have Pascaline. Pascaline, that was another, another device that came in. It was developed by somebody called Blaise Pascal. There's some time when there was a, called, a language called Pascal and it looked like that. I'm just taking you through, uh, now we are getting out to where computers are starting to come. Then there's something called a punched card. A punched card is like, think of it like, you know, about a paper punch. So if there's a paper punch, so uh, there's a machine there that it was used for sensors, it was invented. And you can see it was, that was called in the form of punched holes. So you can see in those black areas, there was some place that has been punched. So, so that punched card was now put into a certain device and it was used to, to actually do some computations. Then there's another one called the tabulator. I think this marks the end of when there was non-digital uh, de computing devices and it was used in the, also in the census. Most of these things were being done in the US. Then going forward, in the digital era, which we're going to see, uh, we started out in something called transistors. And these transistors, I believe you've ever seen these kind of uh, devices, if, especially if you are a boy and you opened up your, your, your father's or mother's radio, should have seen something like this. So in the digital era, these transistors were basically used to if I can say it was actually to make the, the first kind of digital computers. Uh, you still had something called vacuum tubes, which came before transistors. And you're going to see that when I share you with you the extra reading materials that you can see. But when you go on, uh, I'll not go into each of these history, but I'll show you some of the things that came back from there. So these from transistors, we went to what we call I uh, we went to what we call uh, large scale integration, integrated circuits, then large scale integration, very large scale integration, and very, very large scale integration. And we went on and on. I'll still take you through that history, but let me go back to this. Uh, in terms of generations, you can see this is what we call generation of computers. So I was taking you through a pictorial so that you can be able to visualize where we started out in with regards to computers. So the first generation uh, started out as what you call, uh, and every generation has the, the kind of technology that was used most. The first technology that came out very, very well and came out, uh, started out, for example, if you had to write here, uh, so we had a number of generations, so I can do fast, generation, allow me to do that. The first one here was vacuum, vacuum tubes. That was the first kind of, uh, uh, let's say the tool or, or the makeup or the component that was actually making that uh, computing device uh, at that point in time. Then uh, when we went to the second generation, which you're going to see there, Uh, and actually first generation was between 1945 and, so it's very important to know this, 1945, uh, 1956. So these were around 10 years, 1956, that is the time when you are actually making that, so I can just do that. So uh, at that point in time, computers are so big, a computer could fill a room that is as big as I wish you could see the, the room that I'm in. So they were so big and they were so bulky. And the, the, worst, the best they can do was even uh, 
a very tiny fraction of what you and your computer can do. And I mean, your smartphone or your, or your phone can do, even if you have a laptop. Excuse then, me, sir. Yes, 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 Marcy. I am I'm asking for those who are writing their numbers in chat box. If, if mm -hmm. not enroll, let them write their registration number, not their numbers. Okay, if you are not enrolled, kindly type your registration number uh, on, the, on the chat. And also the, the only person who is giving out the number is Mercy, because she's your class rep for this class, for this, for this course one or three, you are class rep, so that I can enroll you so that you can access the notes and also you can access the links. So going on, uh, let me go on to the next thing so that I don't, uh, my time doesn't end without me having covered. Uh, what I was supposed to cover. So going on from 1957, another 10 years to 1967, there's something called transistors. And I think I've just shown you a visual representation of a transistor. So the transistor uh, came out, uh, and actually the first thing that you can realize about the first, uh, the first generation is there's a lot of what you call heat, heat dissipation. Could not even go close to those kind of computers, just dissipating a lot of heat. Then our transistors came in, they consumed less power and they, they did not produce a lot of heat as the vacuum tubes. And then uh, they came about the use of high level languages. For example, the, the, you're going to see about high level languages and also the, the something came about which you call the central processing unit, the CPU and the arithmetic and logic uh, unit. So uh, you'll allow me, I don't know who is uh, unmuted is. Wafula Samuel, you can mute yourself. I'm seeing, I'm getting some feedback from you. So uh, you can mute yourself because you're not speaking right now. Uh, I'll mute you if you're unable to. Okay, it's taking a lot of my time. So, okay. Let me mute, okay, I've done that. So as I go on uh, here, uh, okay, as on the second generation, as I've to told you about, let me go back to this, 1957 to 1967, 1957 to 1967, came about what we call transistors. Those are the main generation. Going on uh, to the next, obviously it's from 1968, which you're talking about the, uh, the third generation. Uh, when you're looking at this this way, from there, as you can see, from the third generation, when we look at it from our notes, Started even earlier. So there's something came about. Who can tell me what it is? What is the main what is the main technology here? I think I've spoke I've spoken a lot. So what is the main technology in the third generation? What is the main technology that is being used in making computers? I'll I'll pick someone. Okay. Yes, Lillian. Lillian can tell me. Lillian Karimi. Mora, Mora Nyange, Nyange Ruth, I think it's that one. Can tell, can tell me the answer. Which is the main? Which is the main? I can zoom it maybe so that I can see. Uh, which is the main? Which is the main technology here? Ruth, you can tell us, or Judy can tell us very fast so that we move on. Integrated yeah, something. Circuit. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, yeah. Tell me on the. Tell me verbally. I, I, I know they are there in the chat, but I, I would prefer a verbal answer. Yes. So the answer is integrated circuit. So, so that one is very important for you to, 
get to use integrated uh, circuits and integrated circuits form the foundations of so many other so many other uh, uh, generations because from integrated circuits that is when we went to integration large scale integration which you're going to see so this is from 1965 i say this is 65 so i'll not delete that but you can see that it will be 1965 so two so it is five you can just do that or i can just do this so that i can just do five here so 1965 two let me go back to this To 1980, and the and the integrated circuits come there. I'll write it that. So on the fourth generation, uh, we went to what we call what large scale. Somebody can tell me. Verbally, very fast, very fast. Let's move on. Let's make this interactive as possible. Large scale fourth. integration circuits. Yes, large scale integration circuits. Thanks so much. So we went to, we, moved, we are now moving on from just an IC, but to a very uh, complex uh, combination of many different transistors, uh, millions, I think uh, hundreds of transistors. Then we, I think from large, very large scale, we even went to uh, thousands to even millions. So uh, you can see uh, 200,000 to 400,000, uh, transistors in one integrated circuit. I can just give you a, a visual overview of what an integrated circuit looks like so that you can see. So this is how an integrated circuit looks like. I think you've ever seen it somewhere, somehow. So, so within it, within that black thing, there's a lot of other transistors that are within it. And they are the ones that power most of our computers most of the time. So uh, within it, you can be able to see all these, they form also part of what is in a circuit board. So I hope you understand that, you can see that, and we can now go back to this. So going on currently, uh, we have what you call very large scale integration. And within very large scale integration, uh, technology, we have what we call the microchip, microchip. So if I show you that, if I just show you the microchip here. So it is something that looks like a processor and within it, a very good one is this one. And you can see it has like a board, a green, board and within it it has so many other uh now you can see now very very large scale integration so computers that is why you can have you can hold a, a smartphone that is very small but you can do a lot of things because of a of a microchip a very small and you can see there's even some issues to a thing like oh corona is coming in and people are going to be put some chips inside and all that there's a lot of conspiracy around it but a microchip technology has always been there with us uh, so that, so I'll write them here so that I finish this diagram that I was giving you. Uh -huh. So this one was up to 1980, 19, 61, I think these are to 1989, if not good, uh, fourth generation. Uh, but we had uh, large scale integration. Had large scale integration there. And from 1990 going forward, I think we also now have what we call the fifth generation. And within the fifth generation, you can confirm that we are having another technology uh, which you call very large scale integration so there's even vvlsi so i'll just write it in short vlsi that is very large scale integration and i think this takes up to current you can say current but it's not really current there is even vvlsi uh 
and you can check which is the latest kind of uh, generation you are in uh, on your further reading and just check on that. So you can still say current, but they are better. We even have right now internet of things, cloud computing, robotics, artificial intelligence. Those are things that are within what we call now the sixth generation. So uh, in your further reading, uh, before we meet the next class, I'd like you to go and see sixth generation and tell me what is there in the sixth generation. So take note of that for those who are writing down uh, sixth generation and check what is there in the sixth generation uh, right now. It might be VVLSI, it might be something else, but go and check uh, there on the internet. Yes? Somebody is asking something? Yes, my name yes, when you talk, yes, um, yes. Sam, when, you are talk, when, you, when you are talking of uh, integration, do you mean a uh, kind of storage or uh, what does it specifically mean? Okay, integration, uh, it means like, think of it like transistors. Uh, let me just yes. do a new page here. So think of it, uh, think of it this way. These are transistor, these are transistor, these are transistor, these are transistor. This, now this one is at the, is it the third, second generation? So that's a transistor. But when you go to, the, now this is now that generation. When you go to the third, uh, when you're talking about integration, we think of it this way. We can now put all these transistors together in one what you call like an, an integration. So they were there together alone, doing some things alone by themselves. But right now they are all together. Like it's, it's like putting like, if you put so many people together in a line, Wambi was, 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 you can think of it that way. So this is how you can be able to see that many transistors have been put together in what we call a integration. So they also realized that uh, when, you're, when you're starting out these, you can still continue to even take these, think of it this way, those ones, then I can have those ones together. Also integrated to form what we call very, okay, let's start with large scale. Okay, to, to something like, let's say large scale integration, then there's also now you go to very large scale integration. What we are writing is not right? uh, visible. So I hope you get it. these smaller chips, yeah. Yes? What yes? we are writing is not visible. Are you seeing it now? Is it visible no, to others? Just, we just seen the table. Visible to me, I don't know why. What problem? Yes, it's visible. It's visible. Personally, yeah. I'm seeing it on my on my on my phone, so I'm even seeing it is visible. Me, even me to me. Yes. It's yes, Lana. To me, it is, it is visible, visible, right? No, yeah, it, you can check it. Uh, it yeah, yeah. Maybe if I you had not checked out, maybe your network or something, but it is there. So uh, I'd like to, before we finish the class uh, in the next five minutes, I'd like to, I've, tell, I've told you a certain note, uh, something to, to go and do uh, when you come in class, somebody will tell me, check out on what is in there. Sixth generation. Tell me what is there. Uh, Tell me what, just, just go and research. If there's anything that is there, uh, I know there's something there, tell me what is there. Also the other thing, uh, talk, tell me about the fourth. Okay, there's, there's a number of revolutions, but there's something called the fourth industrial. Oh, check sure. that out yes fourth industrial revolution okay, also sure. take note of that uh, when you come back to class you're going to tell me what is there in the sixth generation and what is the fourth industrial revolution about 
right? Okay. Yes. So, uh, so let's see whether we finished up that chapter. Yes, let's check. Uh, we have a summary here. Okay, there's some characteristics uh, and some definitions and some types, but I'll not, I'll not, I'll not take you through all these parts. Allow me not to jump you with a lot of a lot of notes yet. We are going to look at it in the next class. So I'll so, just finish it up at the summary here. Uh, so you'll realize that this is what is happening and you can confirm for me. Uh, is it true that uh, computers are continuing to decrease in size? And even your phone is a computer. You'll realize that when you look at the, size, the types of computers. Is it true that uh, computers are continuing to decrease in size? Yes. yes. We can confirm that, right? So the other thing yes. we can also yes. note. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The other thing we can note is that this. Okay. Sorry, this somewhere written powder, but it should be power, right? Power processing. I'll, I'll edit that. That is why I'm telling you. Uh, don't really focus on having PDF notes. You know, if a PDF is having some issues, you'll not be able to change it. But this one, I'll change that. Uh, remind me, I'll, I'll change that. I'll change that to power. So it is improved speed and power, power processing. So you can see right now, I'm having a phone that can still process what I'm doing in class. You have a phone that can do that. Uh, basically, you can see the abacus was basically just doing some, some few additions or subtractions, just that. No divisions, no multiplication. But right now, you can see there's a lot you can do. Uh, Decrease in computers and related facilities cost. Is that true? Uh, right now, you can buy even a phone for a good smartphone for around 3,000, 4,000 shillings or 5,000. Uh, like 10 years ago, uh, you can, could just buy a Nokia 3310 at uh, around 15,000, 20,000. And there's nothing much it can do, just making calls and receiving calls. So uh, with the advent of more technologies, even the phones that we see that are so expensive are getting cheaper. And even the, the, not just phones, just even all computing devices are getting cheaper with time. The number of computers, components in computer per circuit, that is IC, greatly increased over the 500,000 physical elements, e.g. transistors, capacities, DAWs, ETC per chip. So what that means, let me just explain to you in a whiteboard, is some time back, we had, if we'd have a chip that looks like this, that uh, you know what a chip is, that you can have just a capacitor there, a transistor there, uh, something there, another there, and there. But with time, as time has gone, has gone on, with time, we've got, gotten to this point where uh, we have uh, something that looks like this, like a chip. And we have so many things there. We have so many. You can even just do that. You can have like so many things for so many devices, so many chips, transistors, diodes, all of them in one car small space. There are so many, like you can even get to hundreds of thousands. So sometimes uh, even, even to millions in a chip, in one chip. And all these, they are actually working together, doing a lot of work that if it were in this, it would actually take uh, 100 computers to have the same processing power if you had doing that rather than having that. So basically that is what it means. So, uh, so basically that is what I wanted us to achieve today. Unless there's anything, any question from what we've covered today, tomorrow we'll look at, I mean, so, sorry, not tomorrow, uh, next week. But as I've said, we are going to meet on Wednesday and Thursday. So I'll take you through the notes for Wednesday and Thursday, but I'll still demonstrate some things that are practical. And I'll still see how I can do that also through the smart board. And also as we await you to come to campus and we teach you on campus. Okay, okay. So characteristics, I'll not go through them right now. Okay, allow me to go through the characteristics and the definition. The definition, I've already done that. 
So you can see a computer is an electronic device capable of executing instructions developed based on algorithms stored in its memory to process data fed into it and produce the required results faster than human beings. So if a, com a computer cannot be slower than a human being, it should be, since it is electronic, it does all these things. Uh, an um, algorithm is basically a step or a sequence I of events. Uh, I don't muted. Stay muted. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you. So, so that as you go on, so uh, that as you go on, you realize that uh, an algorithm is a sequence of steps so that you can solve a problem. For example, when we were starting out and enrolling you to e-learning, we, totally, we were telling you, do this step, you do online registration, you finish that step, uh, you go to unit registration, you do unit registration, you know the units you are taking, you finish that step, you go to the e-learning portal, you activate your account, you finish that step, you seek enrollment from the lecturers or you get enrolled by ICT, you finish that step, then you start learning. So sometimes you, you call, a student calls you, uh, they have not even done online registration, but they want to start learning. So you have to tell them, no, you have to go through this step first, finish that step, uh, get to that. When you get to this point, call me, then I'll be able to help you. And you can see in each and every step, there are some people who are ma manning or handling that step. So that is what we call an algorithm. So in everything that you even do, even in our life, and even in a computer, a computer needs, has already been reprogrammed to know that these are the sequence of steps it needs to take before it does something. So that is how it does. So I'll not go to the type of computers. I'll just take you through the characteristics, then we finish the class. So another one good characteristic of a computer, which is very important to note, is speed. Uh, the speed, the speed it will take me to do five times three divided by four minus eight times two uh, square root of nine minus nine. Uh, it will take me a lot of time, unless I'm a genius and I'm part of those game shows where we see student, uh, some kids doing that in their mind very fast. Uh, a computer can do that in less than a second, but personally, I love to take a pen and paper and now start doing that. So speed is very important. So it can perform a lot of work in a very short time. Another thing is accuracy. I think I explained that when I was explaining something in Kiswahili uh, about Sambamba. Somebody says Sambamba and that. So we actually choose to use the computer because we want to be, to say what? We want to be accurate in what we do. If somebody is doing the budget for the whole country, you don't expect that person to be to be inaccurate. Uh, because even one, one decimal point can mean uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of shillings. So if somebody says 100.1 uh, uh, billion, and they miss that 0.1 and they write 0.5, you can see that is a whole different figure. So that is very important. Then another thing is diligence. You can, a computer cannot say uh, you are too monotonous. Uh, I'm getting bored or it is losing concentration. Like right now, I know our concentration levels are really gone down. But we are, since we are finishing the class, that. So uh, another thing is versatility. Versatility is the ability of the computer to do a lot of different tasks. For example, currently right now, uh, since I'm a human being, if a student calls me to, to do something else or to help him or her to do something else, I can't do that because I'm in class right now. So I can't, do, I can't do teaching and I do helping at the same time. One has to stop first, it pauses, I do the class, then I finish because I'm a human being. Uh, but for a computer, you can play a music. Uh, somebody I know, some of you can be on Zoom and right now they are watch, they are checking the messages on WhatsApp and they're already there, maybe something, something like that. But that is basically because a computer is versatile and a smartphone is a computer in that case. Uh, but basically I don't do that in my class. I would advise you just concentrate uh, here. Then another thing is power of remembering. Uh, a computer can remember as long as you've stored and it can recall, you cannot say a computer has forgotten where it, it put your data. 
if you saved your 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 music in the memory card you will not go wake up tomorrow and say then when you try to open your music player your phone says i don't remember where you stored it it will always have that power of remembering then it has no iq but this one is a subject to debate these days we have artificial intelligence and we are seeing computers being being tested in terms of that uh so it it is up for debate you can think about that uh I can, cannot make in its own decisions which is very true uh a computer in its basic level cannot make its own decisions it has no feelings it has no emotions uh it doesn't have any mood swings uh that i an equivalent human heart and soul heart so uh, next week we are going to go on from 1.5 we are going to look at the types of computers uh and then when we finish with the types of computers we're going to go to software and hardware uh and then we get into the details of hardware so unless there's any question i'll beg it i'll beg to leave at at that i'll stop my share and get to hear from you maybe what what you've gotten so uh, as a as a reminder as a reminder let me take you back here don't forget to do this look at the sixth generation and also don't forget to also look at the fourth industrial revolution unless there is any question uh, i'll call it a class and i'll be able to answer maybe any other question that may have allow me to stop the recording uh then you can answer your questions uh yeah